welcome to the true Thanksgiving episode. Here we That's are. That's fake news. No, no, no. You are not real. I am fake leg- news. You, I am legitimate. And we are not eating gravy. We're not eating turkey. We're eating pierogi because it's not the Polish restaurant. It's another episode of the Mongerators Happy Hour. What, which one is it? One fifty-three. Yeah. Yeah, it's episode 153. That's pretty exciting. If you add all those up, it's episode 8. We're right back at the start. 9. What? 1, 5, and 3. Oh, nine. oh, oh. Okay, never. Oh, shit. Okay, let's let's reverse and go back in time. That's the sound of time travel. Yes, exactly. Oh, God. What What are we doing? Well, we're here once again for a happy hour, and it's us, the usual cast, vacant core in Manimal. I'd go round to the virtual lesson and everything, but we don't need to. We're all here. We've all spoken. You guys know who we are, and I don't know who you are, so let's go. You know me, and I don't know you. You know be, me, be, but I don't know you, be. Is a lyric in a song that I can't remember, but yeah, I don't know. Precisely. I'm just thinking of the episode of The King of Hell where Bobby learns to kick people in the nuts. <laughs> I don't know you. That's my purse. Freaking. Wow. King of the Hill. That's King a of the Hill. Reference. I love The King of the Hill. I used to have it when we were kids, when we were young. King of the Hill and then Family Guy was on. Season one of Family Guy. Wow, what a weird, what a change of shows. Or what a change that show had, did, rather. Nobody when you got, really liked King of the Hill when it was on the air, but it's just found you, a new life afterwards. When you guys were in elementary school, did you ever just, like, kick your friends in the balls for no reason? Yeah. In fact, I mean, yeah. I've said it on air multiple times, but in the entirety of high school, the <laughs> the game that everyone would play was um, you would go to flick someone in the face, uh, which would naturally cause you, out of instinct, to raise your hands to cover your face and protect the upper body, which would allow you to go whoop and do a it's perfect huge. little middle whoop. finger flick to the to the testicle, and it's you know it what gets I'm talking graphic. about. Anyone who's got bollocks knows exactly what I'm talking about. Where is that that little flick? You've got to get like the bottom of the testicle. You just right on the right on the, <laughs> on the nail or the middle finger, just bang, and you just yeah, I didn't do that. You but... just pop that sucker, you know, like it just clinical. And bottom oh, of the testicle? Like, if you get, like, you've got to aim for the lower half. You don't want to hit someone in the top half because you don't get the full effect. But when you hit someone in the lower half of the ball, it's that one I mean, way. I would have thought you wanted to hit them exactly on, like, the dead center. outermost, like, point. Yeah, dead center. That would have the most force distributed I throughout. I that if you just hit them, I don't know, there's something about hitting it in the... You get someone near the bottom of the bollock, and that always seems to feel worse. Do you guys? Like, that's you the guys one where... Are... Go on. Do I mean, are... I don't know. Do you guys ever fear, like, sitting around and then all of a sudden, like, one of your balls just, like, comes out? What do you, what do you mean, out? <laughs> like, like I mean, it you just, need to invest like, in it just, shorts, it just, like, it just, no, it just, like, escapes the sack. I uh, know. So no, you, I don't. No, are you asking, do we ever sit and assume that our scrotum will spontaneously erupt? <laughs> yeah, like, do you ever just I mean, fear? Not do you ever just, no, do you ever, that's not do you ever just, do you ever Your just skin fear? should be stronger than that, I do you hope. Just, fear one day you like reach down all of a sudden you're like oh shit what's this and then it's like in your hand yeah but i mean no isn't isn't sentient it isn't actively (laughs) trying to escape the sack (laughs) yeah that's like not how that works i i mean i am slightly afraid now that i'm you know approaching 30 and gravity is taking its toll that (laughs) one of these days i i have come to know realize recently that it's going to be a long time but one of these days i am going to sit down and smash my own testicle on accident I've done it. Yeah, when you, you know, there are a lot of together. there there are a lot of spooky thoughts about about balls. So that's why I prefer not to think about them. But it's because they're so small and squishy. And yeah, <laughs> there's still a story that I heard about testicular torsion relating to um, a trampoline. And please I please don't tell me. About and this. I really wish that don't I did not know story. about this story. But it often traumatizes me whenever I think about it. I mean, save it for the Halloween episode. Yeah, I was. <laughs> A couple of lads were telling me at work about when they went and got vasectomies and it involves 
<laughs> what do you mean they just the went and got vasectomies? <laughs> like it was a pedicure? Well, one yeah, of them, yeah. not when. Hey guys, God, hey guys what, are you, what are you doing? What are you doing on Wednesday? <laughs> not recently, obviously. Like you know, this is stuff that they had. But one of them had had like five, six kids, so he's uh, he's kind of entitled. To, he's he's earned that vasectomy. But they were saying I, that I don't know if needles. entitled's the right word. It involves needles okay. to the balls, and those are two. Those are things that do not go together, like Cristiano Ronaldo and, and consent. They just don't mix, which is a joke uh, that neither of you will get because you don't know who he is. But never mind. Is, is that a soccer joke? That is a footballer. Yeah, Christi, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. He's been in news accused of allegedly raping. Which no one should ever say the word raping that way. But moving on. It's you know, I think it's funny. The show. I've, I've noticed something, right? Mm-hmm. Is it because it's easy to tell what sport you're referring to between football and football, depending on how you agree, um, call the player. Okay. Because if you call it a footballer, it's soccer slash football. Or, but if you call them a football player, it's a f- American football slash football. Because we don't say footballer, uh... we say football player. I actually totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, footballer is. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. Football player is. Yeah, it's it's when you have really yeah. good feet. And it's when you have really good like toenails, and people are like, "You're a footballer." You're a footballer. <laughs> you're just off. you're just you're you're just putting all the bling in them toes. Yeah. Well, you know, rape is in vogue. It's top of the news, and indeed in the anime world, which we'll get into in a bit, in a bit when we. Uh, Talk about the fall season, so... I feel like rape's always been in vogue, if we're being brutally sad and honest about the reality of life. Oh, we'll, I mean, there's going to be plenty of discussion later on. Before then, though, let's get out the uh, mandatory work that we have to do, the housekeeping, and that is Manimal. How was your week? What have you been up to? What have I, you am been the with? Mand- I am the mandatory Manimal. Uh, reminds me of when I was living in Omaha, the radio station I listened to had mandatory Metallica every day at four. Hey, you are mandatory. You're pretty much a, a prerequisite, a requirement for these episodes. If you if you aren't here, then we don't go. <clears throat> Is normally the way for these episodes. So, yeah, it's technically right. But um, you are mandated to tell us what happened in your week. It's got to be something interesting as well. <laughs> uh Yes, yeah, so my week was pretty normal. I uh, re- released my 15th album, The Natural Order, and I was very unhappy with it. So the next day, I had a very angsty drive with my band-made mixtape, which has become my go-to tape. You know, I go in the car, I want to listen to some band-made, some real kicking stuff, you know, just like absolute jams. So, you know, listen to that, just kind of being like, well, wow, I'm not happy with my music. You know, you get all the, the angst feelings of turning. You go to the mall and you just kind of like look around and you're just like, yeah. So then I came home and sat down for five hours and wrote all my next album, which I hope will be better. I recorded a song today and it was not bad. God damn. Cause, well, I didn't want to stop because I was like, if I made a bad album, so I'll just make an album that's not bad. You know, I think it's a pretty simple, because the, that's that, well, for me, the main driving force of creative work is like, you make garbage and then you're like, wait, I'm making garbage. So you try to not make garbage and you're like, great, you know, because obviously a post America that, that is like my best or second best album. So anything that follows that is, is not going to be as good. So I'm just kind of like, wow, this doesn't, uh, doesn't do the trick. So it's time to do better. And that, well, that's just my way of doing it. You just, you just get in that, what would you call it? I don't want to call it self-pity. I just call it angst, to be simple. You get into, I guess, creators. There's a word for it. I'm sure there is. That's why you're not happy with your with your work. Yeah, you just kind of like light yourself on fire or whatever, and then you're like, okay, let's let's make some stuff that doesn't suck now. <laughs> yeah, you know, to be <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with that because you're, you, you know... You want to improve and improve and improve on what you've yeah. already. Well, yeah, because again, um, they, I don't know. Well, that's what, that's the natural vault. When you make a shit ton of anything, 
you know, of course it's not all going to be up to quality. You know, you'll sneak some winners out there, but they'll be few and far between. But uh, yeah, other than that... Hey, not I every song can be a Santa Christ. Santa I didn't even write Santa Christ. <laughs> so I know. literally stop. <laughs> Not Absolute every song could be a melon. More like not every song could be a country club, which is the best song I've ever made. No. But anyway, uh, yeah. Other than that, I was I was finally playing freaking Schoolgirls Zombie Hunter earlier. That's one of the games I bought in KC. You know the Legends GameStop. Shout out to the guy who worked there. He didn't really have a whole lot of personality, but shout out anyway. So I was playing this game, and you know it's not very good. It's one of those games where you play it and you're like, this this kind of sucks, but it's okay. Because, you know, it's just a zombie game where you shoot at zombies and you're a schoolgirl with a gun. It's a pretty easy to understand appeal. And, you are know... zombies schoolgirls as well? No, they are big, fat, freaking left for dead beasts. That and, doesn't uh, really answer the question, but okay. <laughs> no, they're 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 beast men. So they're like adult male zombies, which begs the yeah. question: what they're all doing in a high school you know, in Japan? But who knows? I cannot I mean, answer. Probably much. the same thing all the other adult men in high school in Japan are doing. <laughs> they're teachers. <laughs> There's sure a lot ah. of them, but they're teachers. But uh, yeah, so you know, you just do that, and uh, I don't know. It's it's like you want to. I see. I'd say it's like a spooky game, but it's not spooky. I know what you mean. No, it's yeah. kind of. It's Halloween. Not, oh, not really. Halloween. I don't know. I think it's obligatory. Obligatory. Did I really just say that? You yeah. gotta play like you gotta play like Silent Hill or something like that. But nah, play Schoolgirl Zombie Hunter. That's I've the got real until stuff. Until dawn that I've saved from last year to play this year for Halloween. Yeah, so I'm well, excited with that. Isn't that more like um, one of those uh, cinematic choice-based yeah, games? Yeah, 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 apparently. Like, and then obviously you just replay yeah. it and replay it and try and not get everyone killed. Oh. Yeah. But I haven't done it through yet, so I don't know any spoilers or anything for it, so be, I'm uh, excited. Yeah, if, if I actually watch stuff, I'd like to watch some movies because, you know, every time the season rolls around, I'm like, I want to do seasonal things. I want to make it like 2012 when I watched all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies and whatnot, you know? Why don't you then? You you always say this as if there's like some kind of intangible force stopping you from doing so. Yeah, there is an intangible force called my brain that's like, you know, you're not just going to sit here and watch a movie. You what are you doing? You your brain. Just do it. Just put some on. Yeah, what but I do? legitimately don't feel like it. Like the other day I was looking at all my movies and stuff. You I was just like, said you did. I was looking at all my stuff there. I was like, wow, I'd really like to rewatch like Shaq again, Oshana and see how it holds up. But then I was just like, yeah, but then I got to sit there for hours doing nothing. I'm not going to feel do like that. you do a lot of sitting doing nothing, man. Well, you're not entirely wrong. You know, and I, uh, you know, I don't know. I feel like there's, there's like a, there's, there's a state of nothing where your brain is like still like, uh, engaged. I don't know if that's the right word. Because you, I mean, you can be engaged watching stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you I know, but so, so I feel like watching stuff is 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 not active, you know, because you just kind of uh, like sit there. But neither is playing games, really. You just well, you see, I don't know. If I play games, I also listen to a record, so it's like it's multitasking. Yeah, listen to music and play. Like they're all the same. They're just you consuming <laughs> entertainment in some way. I don't. I don't know. It's for some, whatever reason, this whole year has been a year of I just don't want to watch anything. It's yourself. You've just put some <laughs> random weird thing in your head. I don't know where this came from either. Like it, I don't know. Get help. Get help. Get help. I don't, need, I, don't need, I, don't, I don't need help. But, I mean, uh, it doesn't really hurt. Everyone should probably go to therapy at least once in their lives. I don't need shit like that. I just have my own brain. Yeah, yeah look how it's helping. Usually, you. <laughs> how it goes. <laughs> um, I'm a lot more. A I'm a, I'm a lot more stronger willed than that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything too exciting to say. I saw freaking two. There were two British guys in the store this week, so that's a new record. You know, because I always keep a log. I always keep a log when you see you know 
the British Isles or Australians or whatever else in the store. That's what his so, brain's uh, going to. It ain't watching anime or watching anything. <laughs> nah, he's else. watching those sexy British grandpas. Yeah. They're watching the bitter guy who's complaining about his kids breaking the bloody laptop. Yeah. You've broken the bloody laptop, you little I bastard. Got... I gotta find out what the accents are because there's they're always different accents and I'm like, is this is actually a, a British guy or England and Wales and Scotland? There's an I know, island. so it's kinda it's kinda like a, it's a mystery to find out, you know. Yeah, I'll have to link you to some videos and hopefully they can point you in the right direction. Uh, of uh, all yes. these different accents. <laughs> you'll you'll send me to link. <laughs> um Yeah, fair enough. No. Uh Corin. Did you get up to anything interesting that you want to throw out there? Boy, did I. Oh. So, um... So last week, was pushing real hard to get out a project by Friday. And then it didn't go out. Mm-hmm. And then the weekend happened. It did. And, um, just to skip ahead a little bit, we'll skip back after that. This morning, I come in, and we've had some changes, and it needs to go out by noon, so I do about two days' worth of work in four hours. That's, That's where it. my head's at right now, and I have a large glass of bourbon to go with it, but that project's finally out, and I'm very happy about it. It's been on my desk since January. I'm very happy for it to be gone. Uh, that's freaking rip. Friggin' rip that project. Well, right until it comes back to us, but you know, it happens. No, you'll never see is it, again. it. Is it? Is that's not how home. life works. It's not a retirement home. Okay. <laughs> now you see, you see with these projects, right? You send out the project when it's quote unquote done, and then it comes back, and you do addendums to it and make changes as things come up, because no project's perfect. And basically, there's a whole series of us fixing things after the project is done because, you know, there's only, like, four of us, and we can only do so much, and then, you know, three dozen other people are going to lay eyes on it, and they'll come up with stuff. And frankly, we're not off the hook until, like, the building's getting demolished 25 years from now. Huh. That's... Wait, wait. Who makes a building for 25 years of use? I mean, I'm just throwing out a number. Depends who you are, right? Okay. <laughs> I do. I made buildings for that and no more. Yeah. Hey, guys, let's make a building in 25 years. Say goodbye. I mean, it is going... Like, if you look at just the way things are, especially the side of things we deal with, which is a lot of moving parts, things are going to need to get changed as people's use for the building changes. Oh, no, yeah, no, that makes sense. Not to mention, like, big old, like, your, you know, uh, you know, your AC system, that that breaks. That's a lot of, like, motors and stuff. Things are moving. Things are shaking. It's not being maintained properly. I hate when people don't maintain my goddamn... Nobody maintains their stuff, dude. What was the last time you looked at your furnace? I don't have a furnace. What, what do, you do you have any mean? sort of heating? Yeah, we have a boiler. Well, what was the last time you looked at it? Uh, I didn't, but an engineer comes once a year. How do you know? Because he comes to the house. Is he an engineer? Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? It's a requirement. Like It's part of the letting agreement that a, uh, a gas engineer comes and he does all these little checks. If you're asking, well, do I know he's just if he's a serious? gas engineer? He's just judging your gas line. No, no, no. The ga he's a gas and boiler. They go together. Basically, he goes to the boiler. He checks the shit out, makes sure <laughs> it's working fine. I, I guess you could call him fucking engineer. Boy. I guess you could call him a gassy boy. <laughs> Do I know if my little gassy boy is doing his job correctly? Nope, because I have no idea about boilers. But he says it works and it works, and I carry on as normal. Ah, uh, well, I don't know. Point is, there's a lot of things that go wrong. Anyway, I digress. Back to the actual fun things I did. Going back to that whole seasonal things, right? Mm hmm. So, what I like to do in this season is play Dark Souls, generally. Like, I really wanted this year to play Bloodborne, 
but I realized I didn't want to get stuck 300 hours deep in the Bloodborne right before Red Dead 2 comes out. Yeah, you want to keep your schedule free. I'm keeping my schedule free. So what I did instead was bought Dark Souls Remastered. Didn't know they come why, out with why do they already remaster Dark Souls? It's not like it's on the PS1. Um, No, I think mostly they remastered Dark Souls because they needed a to little... Put some, to put something out? They just have something out. I mean, it's a cheap way cash, I think, more or less. And, like, plug some extra money into Sekiro, I, I suppose. But it's like... It one way. Are, the, are the Dark Souls games, are they, like, actually good games, or are they just, like, a meme... Oh no, they're excellent games. Because right, I've always found the games have been like some kind of meme of like game hardness. Okay, so the thing that about you. or difficulty game difficulty game hardness <laughs> game, game hardness. <laughs> That's a hard hard game right there. Knock on it, you know. You'd probably uh, use it as a coaster. You can even tooth think. with that. That game uh, hardness uh, it registers uh, on the more scale. Be careful that that game's hard. No, I mean they are. Um, it's hard to say with Dark Souls. Like, I know the joke is, oh, it's hard. It's like Dark Souls. But I've always liked to say Dark Souls isn't hard so much as it is hard to get into. The better but like, is, can you beat the game? Oh, yeah, you can beat the game. A lot of I, people like, can beat the game. Like, Hundreds, in a, in a good amount of time. Well, what's a good amount of time? I don't know, like 12, 15 hours. Nah, that's oh, a no, 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 no. That's, that's a tiny game anyways. That's the kind of game that I want to play. <laughs> it takes me longer to play finish Halo. Well, I, I could beat Halo 1 in a night. You really? Just run, you just run through that shit and go... That's not playing the game! That's how I play games. <laughs> You're a speedrunner. No, yeah, I'm no, just, I like I, I, my time. I, Dark Souls is an RPG. You want to put in at least 100 hours in this oh, thing. Oh, ooh, rough. Ooh. I'm, I, man, you, you cannot judge it off that. You just say the same thing about Final Fantasy. Right. Sometimes you want a long ass game. Now, granted, yeah. I am positively flying through this playthrough of Dark Souls because I've already beat it six times. Yeah. Oh, uh, the idea of spending more than like twenty hours on any kind of campaign on a game is a nightmare to me. I prefer like fifteen. I'm the opposite. Like, That's not even that much. Like you know, like on like on that much. Like that's on, like. On, like on, not even a weekend's worth of gaming. I know, because, like, multiplayer, I can't even count how many total days that I put into, like, Halo Reach. So you're more of I know a, it's yeah, a freaking a shit ton. I mean, yeah, that's, like, multiplayer. Like, I like the long haul single-player games. But, yeah, it is a long game. That's the thing. I kind of... Mostly play... about... Sorry. No, go oh, yeah. Go on. I'll say, it, Dark Souls is mostly about, like trying different things and failing and then eventually succeeding when you find the right way to do something for yourself. Yeah. It's like there's multiple ways to approach everything, but like you have to do the exploration, you have to learn the boss's moves and all that. And it, it's very cliche at this point to say that Dark Souls is hard but fair, but it, it's basically what it is. It's cliche oh. for a reason. But yeah, they're very well ga put together games. They're very solidly designed. Like It's one of those things where like basically nothing is super, super well, this, there's no like extra fluff in there, right? Yeah. And like even the everything's like even the game mechanics are like part of the story and the tone. Like uh you know how like in you you play a game and you die, right? And then you respawn. And basically it's not like it's not still like a continuous thing for your like character. You've basically just split off into a different universe where maybe you don't die this time. Mm. <laughs> but Dark Souls, when you die, your character does die. They just come back to life somewhere else. And that's right. the thing, is that it's this immortal character who can die as many times as they want. And that's, like, how they get through. They're just literally throwing themselves at a brick wall until it finally crumbles under the weight of their millions of corpses. Yeah. And that's Freaking... what makes it so fun. Oh, I guess so. I don't know. I've I've always felt like games like that. I like to play, but I don't. I don't like games that aren't linear. I guess I don't know. I mean, Dark Souls is linear. Well, play, I don't like games that have an inventory and expect you to level up. Okay, is, is that I mean. is that is just 
an entirely Bet. different fucking ballpark we're dealing with now, man. Yeah, that limits your game choices there. <laughs> I just hate when you have to maintain a stupid inventory and you keep going to menus and having to do shit like this. I just all I want to do is freaking mash buttons and beat shit up and advance in the game. That's fine. Then I will solidly say Dark Souls is not the game for you. <laughs> but if you like, because some people, I love a good inventory. I really do. Uh, but you're just not an RPG I don't man. Know. This isn't it's back fine. in the day when I played this shit out of RuneScape and was perfectly content with freaking going to the docks and catching swordfish and sitting there forever and shit like that. Mm. I was going to say, you, you used to play RuneScape, so... Yeah, but I never viewed RuneScape the same as like games on like the PS2, for instance. Like When I played RuneScape, I didn't think like I'm playing a video game. I thought I'm playing RuneScape. Like, to me, it was, like, an entirely separate experience from, like, Driver 3. Or I see, just Battle feel like you probably wasted so much time on RuneScape. Oh, I did, 100%. Of just clicking, clicking the logs. Driver 3 is a lot different than RuneScape. <laughs> Personally, I'd say that any amount of time on RuneScape is wasted time on RuneScape. What, what do I know? Oh, I don't know. meet you I mean, it was... a boy? What I mean, I have played some RuneScape. I was bored out of my mind the whole goddamn time. I don't know, because I, I, I am the exact generation of people who loved RuneScape, like exactly my specific I era. I don't know if that's true. There's tons of people in my I graduated with who fucking loved Do RuneScape you know as kids. Do you know what? I actually I think, think you just, I think And RuneScape's still true. going. There's still that generation well, happening, I think. There's still there's the old school now, so so people and and I don't know, there's a whole crazy the thing of people... the friggin' economy and shit like that yeah, in the, the game. The only people I hear talking about RuneScape on a regular basis. Or Talk about the economy. Or people between the age of 20 and 22. Uh, yeah. In my workplace. Well, yeah, because it was like that era, and it was just like this like cool game. I don't know it's why it was Minecraft. cool. I don't know why it was cool. I literally have no... Because it's free, I guess, and you don't have to really download anything. You just kind of play it. You, you go in there, you click on stuff. You, you know, I had that Sarah full. Yeah, you guys get jealous right there. I hear the jealousy in that silence. I don't know what that means. I had that I had that Grim Reaper Halloween mask, that snow globe, you know? Remember the random event when the freaking frog came, made you into a prince? Nope. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was pretty exciting. No, no idea. But Dark Souls, <laughs> it's good. And wait, the nice thing about wait, the Master version... Me. What? And Epiphany, RuneScape is just the Fortnite of my generation. Oh. Yeah. Good oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Anyway, the thing I was saying about the remastered version of Dark Souls is nice for a couple reasons. One, it's double the FPS up to 60, which is just so goddamn smooth. And then, well, you know how... When you think to games in the past, they feel like they're in HD, but if you went back to them now, you couldn't fucking tell what's going on because it's so blurry. Yeah. It's like that. So I clearly can't tell a difference in, like, the resolution, even though it's also been doubled up to 1080p. Yeah. I could oh, have yeah. it in 4K if I had a PS4 Pro, but I do not. Yeah, that's just like, have you guys played, like, a PS1 game recently? No. Because yeah. Because I tried playing Driver 2 the other day, and I was just like, what the fuck is this? I like, still just... remember <laughs> when I went back to play, this was way back in college, too, when I went to play Twilight Princess, finally, on the GameCube. Oh. The entire time, like, the entire, like, uh, prologue bit where you're just Link as a farm kid was mostly just my eyes having to readjust to the yeah. lower quality. Well, I forgot, like, I knew, like, especially Driver 2, like, I love the shit of that game, but it's the kind of game where buildings that are directly in front of you spawn as you drive up to them. Oh, yeah, I can and imagine. And it just has, it has a picture of a city in the background, and then these buildings just kind of, like, appear, so you have to kind of guess where the road is going to be. And then I was just trying to play it, and I was like, what is this? It's literally just a bunch of pixels. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, not noticing that, but the also the cool thing is, it is only $40, so it's not a full price game, and it comes with the DLC, which is more like an expansion pack with the way the Dark Souls DLCs are. They're really big, which I never got to play because it was already $20 all on its lonesome. So basically I paid $20 for the DLC I never got to play, which is the normal price for it, and then $20 just for the high-def 60 FPS version of the game I already enjoy. Not a bad there deal. Uh, yeah, if you want to... If you've never played Dark Souls before, you might as well just pick it up with the remastered version. And I bet you could get a hell of a deal 
around Christmas time. It's time to get spooky in the season of the Christmas. Mm. <laughs> the season know. of the Christmas. <laughs> of the Christmas. Santa's top five games. You know, what would Santa's top five games be? They probably wouldn't be Christmas games. He'd probably be sick of seeing Christmas all the time, be, so he'd be like, you need to unwind to some horror yeah, games or something. It'd be something dead random, like the <laughs> Shrek 2 PS2 game or something like that. I hey, that game, that game was actually good. I played that with my friend, and we were doing co-op on that shit. Oh, man, that was that was good. We freaking remember remember Jedi power battles on the PS One or whatever the Phantom Menace game was. Yeah. That was some, that <laughs> was that was that. great. That, that was, was a sick great good game. game. I wanted that game so bad. Oh, I had the I well, all my PS One games were burnt, but it was freaking great. My mate had that game. I used to play the shit out of Qui Gon Jinn. Oh, it was awesome me. because you'd just be a Jedi and you'd just be like cutting up the battle droids. And they had Plo Koon and. You had all the Jedi you could play as. I don't remember how far. I don't think we ever beat that game, but we should play it a lot. I'm sure we didn't. Yeah. No, I definitely don't remember um, beating it. But. <laughs> but. It was a hell of a good game. Uh, you know. Do you want maybe... to also an underrated game? Yeah. Just the original PlayStation Episode 1 video game. Wait, they had an Episode 1 game? On the PlayStation. What the hell it did was... you do in that game? Uh, it was like a third-person action-adventure kind of style. What? Yeah. Okay, okay it like, was... is, is it like the Revenge of the Sith game? No. Oh. That was a good game. Cause I yeah. love that game. The Revenge of the Sith game was awesome. I I, pl- I actually do own that on Xbox. I went out and bought it, like, a... well, a couple of years ago. I think in 16 I went out and bought it. I mean, that and Sonic Heroes were the first two games I got on the PS2. It was a freaking great game, though. Yeah, I mean, I say it's sort of sim- again third-person action adventure thing, but I'm pretty sure you had a dynamic camera in the first episode one game. I just remember playing it like a lot as like Obi Wan on the boo and just like slicing up battle droids and shit. Oh. Yeah, now you say that. Do you know what? Right, that sounds familiar. So okay, it is underrated, but that, anyway, that's that my tears, we can that push tears that 12, anytime We're gonna do we're gonna do a PS one episode on the twelve days of Christmas that doesn't. All right, we can do that. PS one episode, okay, yeah, we probably should because we should probably. It's been about thirty minutes and we haven't spoke about any anime and we haven't manga. spoken about your week either. Oh shit, yeah. Okay, we'll we'll gloss through that then. Uh, my week, I'm. Tired. I'm a tired little boy because I've been up since 7 a.m. and it's now 1 a.m. and I've had a few hours sleep. Because as you guys know, frequent listeners of the show, I'm a bit of a night owl. I only work in late shifts, but I had to go in at 9 o'clock today because to do a little first aid course. Because you know, when in times of crisis, who are you going to call? Why, it's going to be Little Vaco over here. I've not called Little Vaco. Ever- yeah, people in the office. Hey, little Vaco, get over here. Yeah. Oh my God, I did a live show on Thursday last Thursday. You said show. vacant. I fucking called myself vacant. Not once, <laughs> not twice, but uh, thrice oh no. on a live show. And the girl I was with, because it's someone who I don't. She's not someone I, I particularly like. Not not someone who I'm friends with. Not someone I have a, an established rapport with. If you know what I mean, like, you know, it wasn't something that we could really just play off. She just sort of stared at me blankly. And then when people were, like, asking what, like, because you have a little earpiece on, they're like, uh, are you okay? What's what's going on? <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just, yeah. uh, just ignore it. There's nothing. Just don't. Uh, uh. No, you just gotta be like, it, it, I'm real tired, man. I'm sorry. Well, that's the weird barrier if you're if you're like online and names ever come up in real life. That's why sometimes people make fun of me. They're like, okay, can't talk. You know. I mean, like everyone has online names after yeah. like a cer after like a certain age. So I'm betting everyone who was looking at you weird also have weird online names. Oh no, everyone, everyone, like oh no, no, no one like eighty one. No one like looks weird. It's just like it's just that weird barrier that you that you break. It is in. funny yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you no call matter... people by online names. I mean, yeah, but I mean, there's definitely one dude in your office who's like Cockburn sixty nine four twenty blaze it. Yeah. Well, you know that most of mine are Constable, either Sheriff Big Balls or Constable Colossal Cock now. For uh, well, yeah, and, and admittedly, at least you didn't go to that. <laughs> you know what's what's the uh, what's the best online username you ever used? I think mine was like Flying Donkey Punch. I think that was pretty much like my pinnacle. I think 
I, I've got to go with Constable Colossal Cock or Sheriff Big Balls. You know, the classics, and you can't go wrong with them. It's pretty I really good. I only had the two, so I guess I've never fucked up. No, there you go. I don't know. But, um, yeah, my week. Yeah, I was doing a little first aid course. I had Wait, a little smile because... That reminds doing... me. Oh, what's what's Go on. The best gamer tag I ever saw was KFC Mastermind. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we talk more about games in the twelve days of Christmas. We'll be uh, doing at some point yeah, in the next week. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, did first aid, and it was really weird because we are an office, as I've just made clear. I look work in an office, just a normal office. Um, you know, so you wouldn't expect first aid to be anything beyond people passing out from illness or, you know, needing a plaster or a minor wound dressing. You know, normal shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, in an office, you ain't going to expect some catastrophic injuries, are you, really? This bitch no. was going off as if we were, like, going to go to war or something. Like, Jesus Christ, the things that she was telling us. Like, she's like, okay, so you need to uh, you need to know how to do all these tour, tour, what they called? Tourniquets? Tourniquet? I don't fucking know. What Tourniquet. Yeah, that's the one. Even though it's just where you tie it's not A tourniquet's not difficult, though. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't need to know that in <laughs> yeah. an office-based environment, yeah. do I? Yeah, you're, you're, you're freaking learning tourniquets. It's World War I mean, Three up in here. You don't have any knives, do you? Yeah. You have knives? It's England. Yeah, that's all we got. We ain't got no guns. I mean, in the office. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We do have knives. <laughs> then you could, understandably, maybe use a tourniquet if someone cuts yeah. themselves. But, you know, and like a defibrillator. I mean, I've never used one of them, but it was really cool to learn because it talks to you. It's like Knight Rider. tells you what to do. I mean, sick. That's probably pretty useful. I mean, my office doesn't have a defibrillator. I don't think it we does. We don't. It's in I don't the even think we have a first aid kit. Do you guys got an emergency eye wash station? Um, no, you but we probably have... shouldn't need one. To be honest, <laughs> no, I think that's just like school and like this in like science rooms that have. Yeah, if, you, if you're dealing yeah, with like chemicals, chemicals of any sort, yeah. <laughs> Although they did teach us about like chemical burns and stuff. And it's like, you, I don't guys... need to know this. I mean, it's useful. Like, don't get me wrong. I walked away going, "That's really useful. That's interesting." You know, I mean, I'll know what to do. Just wait until the day you walk outside and the person in front of you like cuts their arm off and gets a chemical burn in the eyes at the same time. A motherfucker. Well, while this being electrocuted and mauled by a bear. Yeah, and you'd be like, yeah, everyone step aside, doctors, you can screw off. Yeah. I took a it's course. Like goes, I'm a trained surgeon, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Actually, pal, I've just had a first aid training course. That's when you break step out the aside. that's when you break out the special like little card that has your name on it in written written in pen. <laughs> it's like have my you... own card. <laughs> have you enough. ever have you ever seen the Twitter joke? Where it's like, person has a heart attack on an airplane. Ooh, stewardess yells out, is anyone a doctor? And then it's like, someone's aunt who's about to un unpop a bottle of lavender oil. I've got something even better. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, other than that, I, 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 I know my brain's frazzled. I've done stuff. It was my girlfriend's birthday. We celebrated the birthday with fun and junk and that was nice there's a nice little break. there you go oh i forgot to mention that that today we're recording this on monday is the true thanksgiving uh yeah. no it's not yeah, you did yeah. mention it at the top of the show so i'm mentioning it again means. it's it's our thanksgiving it's canadian thanksgiving for and it's it. not Just for the it's benefit not of those who are unfamiliar it's not really a big deal at least in in my family i don't know did they give you the day off for it yeah so why is it should be a big deal? I don't know. It's just kind of like, yeah, whatever. You know, we'll eat some food like like we always do. And, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> just kind of like. How, how, how quick you just lose interest when you tell it a story. Because you start really enthusiastically and then just, if you speak for more than 10 seconds, you just start going, yeah. Oh, yeah, I just, I just need to get yeah. that little bit of representation out there, out in the air, you know. Just uh, kind of stand some ground up in here. And that's about I guess, it. but like, I don't know. You just don't have a leg to stand on, though, right? No, because for starters, I, it's it, in the it, wrong months. Second of it, all, you guys didn't start having Thanksgiving until o over a hundred years after America did. Yeah, and really? you know what? And you guys yep. know what? You guys know what we didn't have? 
turkey, what? though we did have only pierogies. See, that's just pierogi dinner. Yeah. Did your mom make pierogies? Because she knows how keenly that, you know. That is ex- actually exactly why. Oh, <laughs> Mom of the year right there. Knew about your heartache of the Polish bistro and she's that is, gone and... Uh, that is the exact reason, though. Bless her. God bless her, Mama Manimal. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, just got to get that out there. Got to have a little segment. Got to have a little segment of Canadian Thanksgiving. So, uh, happy Thanksgiving, all you Canadians out there. I hope you did, I don't know. I hope you celebrated it more than Manimal did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I don't give a shit. You don't even care? That's how little he cares about it. (laughs) I don't know. No, you guys, you, you guys care. know I'm a, I'm a big. You guys know that I'm a big time Yuletide fan. I'm a I'm a moderate Halloween fan. I'm not a Halloween hater, but Christmas you know, trumps I, all. See, yeah, you guys know that. You know, I like the holidays. I I ain't, I ain't complaining. But Thanksgiving is just one where I'm just kind of like, eh, whatever. That's fair. No, I can oh, no. I can see that. I care more about like Remembrance Day than I do Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like growing up as a fat child, Thanksgiving was just like a wonderful excuse to eat a lot of food and not feel bad about myself. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. There you go. <laughs> it's I'm also sure. like the only time of year I ate turkey growing up. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, true. I guess turkey's not as common. I I prefer the old the old idea of having to like go out and be like, all right, son, we're gonna hunt us a turkey today. Yeah, no, I mean, you can do that, but, like, time it takes time. Yeah. What did, uh, oh, yeah, I think that was geese that my one friend hunted that Ooh, year. I'd yeah. love to have a goose for Thanksgiving. I've never had I'm goose. Not. Yeah, I'm I don't, I don't, me some geese. I don't know what they taste like. Do they still eat goose in England popularly for, yeah. like, Christmas and junk? Um, I suppose What do you guys some... do for Christmas? Because I, like, okay. I'm... For, for, because, like, for the rest of the world, I guess. And I suppose you guys, too, but I should think, for the most part, the rest of the world knows, thinks British Christmas, and we think uh, a Christmas carol, and we think the goose, you know. Ah, it's I don't know. I mean, all I think about forever. is, like, all I think about is, like, Mr. Bean's nice sandwich with carrots. Yeah. Now, it's been turkey for, I mean, certainly modern times, like, you know, the last... 60, 70 years or so, but it's turkey. So that's the only time we have turkey. I wonder um, if it has something to do with... It must have something to do with the war years, surely. Yeah, well, they definitely weren't having turkey in the war years. They were having... I know even, like, my mom and that, like, she wasn't... She never had turkey as a kid, like, growing up. Um, I can't remember what they had. Well, I'm, I'm just not a I turkey know. fan, either. <laughs> we're getting sidetracked. You know, this is... A, I'm, this is I'm, no, I'm no... I'm no... I'm no turkey hater, but I'm also no turkey fan. This is another one for days of Christmas that we could get on with. Fuck my week. I don't know what's going on in my week. Let's roll on to some news because we've got a lot to cover. And when it's uh, time for the roll. news, you know what to choose. You need to tune in to Happy Hour FM. We're going to give you all the latest manga and anime news. Yep, it's that. That's right. It's like time of the show that we briefly mention manga and anime. So, Manimal... You mentioned earlier that you're not feeling watching stuff. And I get uh, yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. Get it. Well, hopefully this will change your mind because one of your absolute bangers of a show is... White uh, Album 2? No. k No. No. What, what is it? What is it? Yoru Camp, so laid back camp. Oh, huge. <laughs> absolute banger. It was a good, getting... it's, a good, it's a good show. It's getting uh, a se- season two, so uh, there you go. Season two for Euro Camp. Uh, keep calling it Euro. Euro I, Camp. I, I didn't. I didn't finish season one. Oh, okay, never mind then. But um, I, I really like the series. The two episodes I watched. <laughs> Euro Camp. I was like, I was like, this is really nice. I like it, this, and then I just never watched any more of it. It's getting a second season, don't know when, because fuck knows, but I was just surprised that that was a show that was getting a second season. Speaking of new seasons... Well, um, it, was, we... it was a pretty popular series, though. I think it actually has a lot of appeal, because it's it's literally 
it's one of those hobby based series that's literally about camping you know mm-hmm. so it like plays that element straight and it uh you i feel like people who don't even like that genre often like this series because it just has like like it's literally in the title it has a laid back approach to things you know I mean, sometimes that's what you want. Just want to relax, yeah. want to watch some people go camping. It's just yeah. some light fluff entertainment. I mean, it then... sure isn't as good as it's. It sure ain't no sketchbook full colors or anything like that. But it's pretty, you know. You know it's it's okay. From hey. the two episodes I watched. <laughs> and another one that's having another season. So we mentioned a few weeks ago that a certain magical index is having its third season. In fact, I believe it's dropping this season. Um, stands to reason that science, a certain scientific railgun is getting third season as well, which is the thing. Freaking railgun, the coolest anime title of all time. A certain scientific railgun, like freaking cool ass title. It's a cool ass name for like character, like she's the railgun. Now, you know, back in the day, back in 2013, after I watched Shakugan Oshana, I was like. I ought to watch those certain magical series, and then I never did, and I never will ever watch them. <laughs> I watched um, Railgun. <laughs> I haven't watched Magical Index, but I don't know. It's, it's one of those right. series that they they used to be on like my plan to watch list forever, but they, they don't look particularly good. Yeah. They just happen to have amusing titles. Yeah, mm. like I say, nothing special. They were all right. Um, yeah, that's getting a new. That's getting a new season, series three. Then a couple of trailers to announce. The uh, Code Geass, Lucia the Rebellion, got a new trailer. Um, you saw a few new characters. Saw Suzaku in the Zero costume. So it's like, oh, that's my boy. That's my boy. That was fun. It's getting me geared up for it. And also Jump Force, the game has now previewed Yu-Gi-Oh! Yugi is in the game and playing cards, so is that is that have... is that a fighting game? Yeah, can't wait for Yugi to fight. I don't know Vegeta or someone. Oh, know. is it is it just another one of those Shonen Jump fighting games? Yeah, Jump Force. It's the one with um, yeah. Goku and everyone in. Yeah, it's a yeah. button mash. It's what you want. <laughs> And, I would prefer uh, the the Dengeki G's fighting game where you get to play as Love Live and bang Dream characters personally, but whatever. Fighting each other, kicking off against each other, and yeah. um, the well, it was going to be news, but then it's kind of a half news story. It's like, so My Hero Academia, the film, is going to be broadcast. It's going to be screened in the UK. The subbed version is December the fourth. The English dubbed version is going to be screened December the 5th. Now, if you're a UK fan wondering where you can see this, tough shit, because they haven't announced it. You, it's so weird. They know the exact date when they're going to have a dubbed and sub version, and they know it's only going to be one day, but they have no clue where in the country it's going to be showing. So, you just have to sign up for email alerts. But is I might it, actually make yeah, but is it, it, is it not a given? Isn't it a given that it'll just be like London? Maybe I don't know because if it's a chain that's picking it up, then they might have you know like one showing. Um, obviously the benefit of England being quite small is even if it is in London or Manchester or Birmingham, like preferably Manchester or Birmingham because they're not too, they're like an hour away from me. I might make the trip. I don't know. Um, because I've never gone to see an anime film unless well Pokemon films don't count. I've never gone to see an anime film in the cinema, so I might actually try it for once. And just see, see how it is. Um, I'll keep you posted on that because it depends, obviously, on the time of the screen and where it is. It'll probably be up like in Scotland or some shit. I don't know. But um, other than that, that's all I've got. Does anyone else got any news they want to throw out? I sure have got nothing. Uh, I don't know. Apparently, Sam Jackson liked the Bleach movie. Hey. <laughs> Why did was he? Is he like, man? We gotta do a Hollywood version of this. Uh. No, he left a note for the Biakia actor, apparently. Really enjoyed his performance. Oh, that's funny. Hmm. Fair enough. I did not I miss Sam like Jackson. See... Liked Weed Shit, but... I forgot that on. Bleach yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. happened. 
I watched it and then I forgot. I would it. like to see Samuel L. Jackson in a Hollywood remake of Bleach. I'm not sure what character I'd put him as. He could play Maybe any character. He could play, he could play Rukia, and I'd be like pretty okay with that. I mean, yeah. I would, I would love to see Sam Jackson as Zara- Zaraki. That'd be kind of cool. I'm looking here for the powerless motherfuckers. It'd be great. Oh, I can imagine it. It'd be good. I want the Hollywood remake of Bleach. Who knows? Maybe they will one day. Maybe we'll see that in a lifetime. But before that, there's something very pressing in our lifetimes, and that is the season. We're here to talk about what is happening and what's going on in the anime world right now, and that is the full season. It is officially got underway. Uh, yes, yes, it's time to have waffles. There's so actually... <laughs> There's so many shows this season. I'm going to put peanut butter on the waffles. Yeah. It's now nope. the point of the show where Manimal leaves and goes and, f- and feeds himself. Where me and me and Corin have hopefully checked out some shows. Um, I I will preface this with my night on Saturday, or it was either Friday, Saturday, Sunday, was the plan I was going to watch some shit. But great news, the Crunchyroll app wasn't working on my TV, so... I uh, couldn't watch shit, which is great. Have you so watched I anything? I have. I have watched okay. four shows. All four right. I, I've watched four shows. I was okay. going to watch more shows, but we can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay because it, it's kind of admittedly bit. I know when this is coming out, guys, I know I know this is going to be the, the 11th or whatever it's going to be, but... Last week, nothing had come out, really, so we hadn't checked anything out. So, I'll say, you yeah, know, I know it's in Sweden. You have to remember, our cycle starts on Sunday, right? So if it's not out the Sunday before you, our episodes come out, it's not out in our yeah. present. Sorry. You know, that's that's just what happens. So um, why don't you start us off then, Corin? What have you checked out first? Ah, okay. What did I check out first? Well, I was going to check out Attack on Time first, but then I, apparently they're taking a hiatus. In the middle of the season, which is fine. We got to a good place, I suppose, with it. It felt like a stopping point in any case. Yeah. So it's going to be off for a little while. Not sure how long. And then it will be back. Oh, is it not? I thought it was they, just a week. They are taking a little time off from what I've oh, heard. okay. I'm Do not sure. I don't mind that. I really yeah. don't mind. It, it's a mid-season break. That's all it is. Okay. So it's coming back around. Not sure when, but it's coming. And then uh, the next thing I watched was uh, something that's very exciting. JoJo Part 5 is finally here. Woo! The Golden Wind. Woo, 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 woo. And uh, so for those of you not familiar with The Golden Wind, it, I knew kind of what it was about in the past but I didn't really remember it until like I watched the first episode. Mm-hmm. It's basically it takes ver- place very shortly after the end of part four. And this one, instead of being set in anywhere else, it's set in Naples, Italy. And we are in the main Jojo this time is <clears throat> I'm going to pronounce this probably kind of wrong because when they say it in the show, it doesn't really sound like Jojo. Yeah. But it's still a JoJo. It's Giorno Giovanna is his name. He's Italian slash half Italian, half Japanese, I think. Somehow, the thing <laughs> is, he is Dio Bravo's son, and Dio Bravo is the main antagonist of parts one and uh, two or three, rather. Yeah. You know, he's the big bad in JoJo. Like, if you think of who's the bad guy in JoJo, it's it's Dio, right? It's going to be Dio. Now, the thing about Dio is that in the 1800s, during the Victorian era, that's when he and his half, his adopted brother, um, uh, Jonathan Joestar, the first Joestar that we care about, they were around then in the Victorian era. And then he becomes a vampire, and eventually Jonathan cuts off his head, and then they get into a fight on an ocean liner, which sinks, and they and Jonathan dies in the middle of the ocean. And then Dio's head spends a hundred years at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean in a coffin, right? But he's still yeah. alive because he's a vampire. He's a vampire. And then in the 1980s, he gets uh, sucked on out of there by a fishing vessel somehow. 
and then it's revealed that in their final battle, he, I guess, bit off Jonathan's head and stole his body. So in the 1980s, Dio is his own head, but he has sewed his head onto Jonathan's body. And in at the end of part three, Jonathan's great-grandson, Jotaro, kills Dio, but somehow between getting pulled out of the ocean and then dying in Egypt, because they go to Egypt, Dio makes a stopover in Italy and I guess has sex with a Japanese woman there with his half, with his, not half brother, step brother's penis. <laughs> and creates a person named Giorno, and it's not his real name. He changes it from his original Japanese name, even though he was born and raised in Italy. Uh, and Dio's not Italian. He's he's British, and so is his brother's penis. <laughs> so Dio has half of Jonathan's DNA, half of Dio's DNA, because it's vampire magic, and well, and then another half of whoever his mother is, who apparently is a Japanese woman living in Italy, or was. Standard. And that's how we get to this JoJo, Giorno Giovanna, who was a half Italian, half Japanese, half British, British, half vampire man. See, it all makes all sense. <laughs> And he's a criminal I, this time yeah, because I, Dio I was a terrible person, and now he's half good, half bad, and it's not really clear where his like morals lie. Because again, also, he is like a he's like a grifter. I, I am also half Italian and half vampire. Yes, and uh, he's fifteen, and he looks like he's about thirty-five, as per usual. Which, I was gonna say that's every. And he has a year. giant titty window in his what I guess is a suit. I don't know. The fashion gets really weird in this time. Like, in part four, the fashion was weird. Okay, okay, like, back up. Yeah. Can you explain what a giant titty window is? He has, like, a suit, right? Like, think of a purple suit. Okay, now, don't imagine... Go- don't Google giant titty window. Just inst- do it instead okay. of, like, a buns and, like, opening to, like, where you might have, like, a shirt underneath and a tie... Imagine it just has, like, a zipper all the way up, like you might imagine, like, a Japanese school outfit might have. Yeah. That the zipper's undone to about his solar plexus, down to, like, the middle, like, just below his ribcage. And then it's pulled open in sort of a heart shape. So it's ah, just his yeah, pecs yeah, yeah, yeah. just sticking out there. And there's another dude who with, like, a similar thing. It's That's very strange. Bigger. And uh, apparently his power, his stand, is he can create life. Like he made a, like a tree show up, and like one of the things he made up was just like a frog. And they're things that are alive, and if you attack them, the damage you deal to them gets reflected onto the person who attacked them in the first place. Oh, I love stands. I love yep. the stands in JoJo. And the other dude who showed up can apparently just like unzip you. And, like, shove stuff inside of you. So, like, at the end of the episode, he makes Giorno, like, vomit up a bunch of fingers he cut off a dude. Ugh, that's pretty grim. Yeah, so, uh, it's, it's very, very stupid, and I love it. Yeah, when it's stupid, that's the best. Best JoJo <laughs> is when it's, well, it's always pretty dumb. It, it's stupid. always been pretty dumb. But, like, it's very stupid. And from what I understand... This is not as beloved as the pre some of the previous seasons, but like it's still more JoJo. And honestly, I don't know how much more JoJo is left after this, because I know there's a part six at least. Because there is a part that takes place in like an alternate universe. Yeah, I it's like sort of a soft the, uh... reboot of the entire show series, I guess. Hmm. But this is still on the original timeline. I'm so far behind the manga. I need to catch up on it. I have no idea. I've only ever watched the anime. I think it's maybe the best version, but, you know. More JoJo Jojo is not a bad thing. It's never a bad thing. 
Do we uh, want to switch over to something you've watched in our first impressions episode? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I have a very mixed bag. Um, you'll probably know. Uh, so the first thing I watched, All right. as, as you, as everyone will recall, you picked yours at random. Yeah, and I don't think I've genuinely watched any of those just yet. <laughs> well, I think I did, but one of them was totally wrong. I thought it was that name, and it wasn't. And ah, <sighs> we'll 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 uh we'll get into that one. But um, yeah, first thing I watched was Goblin Slayer. Um, okay, I looked at this, and I really also am interested in this one. Yeah, um, I watched it before because there's been a whole shitstorm about it afterwards, and I, I mean, maybe I don't know. I don't know if I my opinion would have changed after. Well, probably not. But like, so I watched it unaware of anything about it. I just knew that it was one of the most popular series on live chart when we were looking, um, which normally means there's you know people are talking about it and stuff. So I thought we'll check that out. It's come out nice and early, so why not? I um, watched it, you're going along, you just, I guess, I don't want to give out too many spoilers, but I guess it's just the first episode, it's quite self-explanatory. So, very generic fantasy world, you know, oh, we're some beginner adventurers, let's go, you know, to this cave, this goblin cave, we're going to do a raid, we're all happy little adventurers, and then they go to a goblin cave, and then... It all goes wrong, and it takes a very, very dark turn. So, it, I just thought it was like a PG, you know, PG-13 kind of thing. But, oh, it's very, it's it goes really gory. Like, not ma- not over-the-top gore, but, like, certainly quite bloody. So, I guess, I guess, like, Attack on Titan levels, I guess. Okay. You know, quite gory like these goblins turn out to give them a lot more trouble than the than the than they were expecting they end up brutally murdering all of the party except the girls because what they do to the girls instead these goblins is that they remove all their clothes they tear their clothes off and then rape them ah and it's sort of shown it's it's uncomfortable a little bit to watch but obviously that's the intention Uh, so the whole the whole controversy has come from the inclusion of that. So you see the girls having their clothes torn off. You see basically a goblin's claws going into her, you know, tearing into her back as he's about to um, shake her. Um, and he I mean, that's maybe not the best way to put it. Yeah. Um, and then you hear her screams as the other girl runs away. Um, and then there's like goblin children which i think are like their ba- they basically use the women as, to make more goblins and then i don't know but anyway um the goblin slayer turns up rescues the last girl before she's about to die um and brutally massacres every single goblin one of them he just stabs and then puts a torch in its face and burns its face off um yeah he massacres them all he's the goblin slayer in his full armor and just says you stupid rookies why would you come in here you're an idiot <laughs> See, um, I didn't know about all the controversy, mm-hmm. but aside from the goblin rape, that's kind of why I was interested in the show. Because, like, if you watch the PV, it's like nothing but blood splatters and this dude in this giant suit of badass armor killing I goblins. Did not watch. That's the thing. It's oh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's it's like say nice and bloody. Um, there's some metal music playing when he appears and starts kicking ass, and it's fucking pretty damn good. I really enjoyed the action in it. The um, That is the point of contention, basically, is that people are saying, boycott it, it's glorifying rape, it's, it's fan service gone too far, but for me, I would say it's, could the show have done without it? Certainly. Is it uncomfortable viewing? Yeah, I can see where people are put off from it, but it's certainly not glorifying it. It's not done in a way where it's like, oh, yes. I'll say if it's, it seems to clearly be depicting it as a terrible fucking yeah. thing. So the that's music. not different. From, yeah. Showing something is different from glorification. Exactly. It's right. You're not building terrifying. a monument to goblin rape. You're saying these, mo- got mo- these are terrible monsters who rape yeah. women. It's basically making you hate the goblins as much as possible. So then you, you also elicit the joy. Cause basically the point of it is, there's a guy who slays goblins. He's going around, he's going to kick fuck out of some goblins. That's the point of the story. So the, they set up, these goblins are little shits, and you want to see every single one of them die horribly. 
And it, you know, that's how it chooses to do it. For me, it's like I say, clearly shown in a light where it's a horrific thing, and it's, you know, these goblins are. Uh, it, it, it's so weird. I've seen people saying like it's clearly erotic. It's like if you find that shit erotic, you need to go see a therapist. How we, how Corey mentioned seeing a therapist once in your life, you need to go see one. If you were looking at that, going, oh, they shouldn't have this. Um, but yeah, um. We'll check out the next episode of Goblin Slayer because it it was unexpected. I didn't check out the PV. That's on my, my fault. But yeah, I uh, I'm interested to see where it's going to go. Yeah, and I'm going to keep that one on the reserve list in case anything else goes unsmooth. Although right now, everything I've kind of watched does look like it's going pretty good. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything else to say about Goblin Slayer? No, that's it there. Not much right. else to say. So, next thing I watched was Radiant, mm. which is sort of... I'm trying to find a, something else to compare it to, and I'm not really sure what that would be. I feel like it has this weird sort of mixed feel between, like, something... <sighs> Sort of, oh, it reminds me a lot, strangely enough, of Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. And that probably has a lot to do with, like, the way we're introduced to the the first, like, the, the main character dude is, like, uh, he's just, like, teenager, and he's, like, learning to be a sorcerer or whatever. Kind of annoying, generic shonen character type. But, yeah. like, the thing is, he's, like, under this badass sorceress lady who has, like, one fucking arm and a giant lance. And giant hair, and the whole thing is, like, basically, like, demons fall from the sky and attack people. And, like, usually, even if you, like, survive getting attacked by one, it, like, fucks up your biology and suddenly you can use magic. Mm Mm-hmm. And people hate you for that. Apparently, because it makes you weird and social outcast. Because I don't know. Brand you. It it sort of yeah it does brand you in weird ways like you know normal people don't understand magic so they don't like it but like they're living up on like this weird like uh, balloon house in the sky which is really cool and um, if the uh, intros believe believe there will be sky pirates so that's fun but like yeah a giant monster falls down he gets his ass kicked and then buff Santa Claus shows up. He's dressed like a, just a fucking superhero in latex and everything. <laughs> and, like, hits him with, like, a giant laser beam. Good. So it seems like it's going to be a show of a lot of, like, really different character designs, which I love. And I love one arm Lady. I love one arm Ladies and, and, and we'll, Santa Clauses. We'll see how it goes. It does seem like it has promise, but I don't know where it's going to go. I feel like the main character could grade on me. But, like, everyone else seemed, we've been introduced to, magic-wise, seems interesting. And, like, if you watch the intro, there's just tons and tons of different characters that get flashed by. So, we'll see how Look it goes. Look forward to seeing them in episode 11 and 12. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, we'll see how it goes. I have, it seems kind of like generic shonen, but it could have enough interest, interestingness going on. We just really haven't established the plot yet. Yeah. No, that's cool. It was one, I, uh, again, I had my eye on. In fact, um, oh, no, it isn't. I don't know. I can't remember my list. I need to find my list and go through it properly. Had it the other day. Um, but yeah. Uh, what was my... I'm trying to find my next one. There it is. Okay, one that I thought was on my list, and it isn't. And I watched it, and it was weird. As Dekaichi... I'm being harassed by the sexiest man of the year. Hold on. Which one is the kaiji I'm being harassed by the sexiest man of the year? Um, it would also be... Dakaratai... Or Dakarate Otoku One I Ni Odasarate Imasu. Ah, I'll make it so your body's unable to forget mine. Yeah! <laughs> I see. So. This sounds... Did we talk about this one? I don't... This sounds like the rapey one of the season. Yep. You guessed it. It was definitely one of the rapey ones of the season. So, 
It is a yaoi. Um, so basically, it was on Crunchyroll, and I don't know what is up with this. I don't know if it was an issue with the subtitles or if they're just deliberately going with this very vague phrase. But you follow an actor. He's a child actor. He's been he's quite devious and nefarious in his methods. He wants to be number one no matter what. And in a magazine poll, he has been voted the man you would most like to be hugged by hugged. for five years. Be hugged by. So I don't know if that was just a soft euphemism for to be fucked by or sexiest guy. Like It just makes sense to just say they're the sexiest guy. Do you know what I mean? It was weird to say that you were hugged by them. But anyway, I feel like this might just be a translation thing. So I'm watching the that's PV, I'm and I'm thinking. pretty sure they say sexiest man several times in it. I think it might have just been the choice of Crunchyroll then, because that's what I watched it on. Um, because it also says the, in the title, it translates as sexiest man. But anyway, um, so he was this for five years. Then a young upstart actor who's a foot taller than him, which is important, um, ah. comes and upstage is in the same production. And it's like, all oh, right, I idolize you. I, he's number one now. And this guy, the older actor, is number two. So they go out for some drinks. He wakes up in the bed of the young guys and he shows him a video of him being a prick and he's like, shit, my image. He's like, what do you want? Why have you recorded me? You want to use it as leverage. You can have anything you want. And then he goes, I want to have sex with you. Pins the fucker down, forces a kiss from him. He throws him off him. He runs to the bathroom. For some reason, rather than running out of the place, he goes to the bathroom, sits on the toilet. He's naked, the uh, the older guy. But then the other dude follows him and says, no, no, you can't get away. And then kisses him while he's having a piss or a shit or I don't know what he's doing. And then they just go back to work and they work on the show and then they have sex at the end of the episode. And it's really weird and uncomfortable. It's like Citrus, but worse. Like, in that terms of, do you know the sort of very, like, it... I suppose if in in the world of fiction, I guess it is, because it's like, oh, they forced a kiss on them, but they wanted to kiss them really. Cold. I don't know if we can say that's the world of fiction. I think that's a very specific that's, slice of fiction. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that they're saying where it's all like, they did really, they did want to really. Okay, they're just that is not, the, but just the most, it's the excuse you hear every time, like a rapist goes to trial and everyone, he says, and everyone rolls their eyes. Yeah. It's like, because they frame it in such a way like that, and it's like, no, if you step back from it, it's it's the laziest writing as well, because it's like, this girl's being very forceful, which forces this girl's feelings to, she that she never knew she had, um, only it's boys this time, obviously, you know, it works both ways, it can, I mean, it's for, you know, for boys love, for uh, Yuri as well, it's like, Oh no, when they kissed me, this is the first kiss I've ever had. I've got all these feelings now for boys, or I've got all these feelings for girls. And it's very rapey and uncomfortable. It's just, and look, there is, it there's, just wasn't there's, good. There's such a thing as being like, I don't want to say aggressive. Aggressive is the wrong term, but like proactive. Aggressive like, is, is, I get what you mean, not physically but like, aggressive. You, but... Yeah, not physically aggressive, but like proactive in like trying to form a relationship with someone. There's that thing. Like you can... Yeah, I guess an aggressiveness and like the quality, but that's not like when someone says they want an aggressive woman, it's they don't want like someone an aggressive that, yeah. woman. They want an aggressive woman. They want someone in in a in a playful sense who's gonna in, be in, you in know a playful sense who's going to take the lead and kind of thing. Pin but, down that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. But you're all game for it. But know? there's a consensual issue that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Key if any aspiring Japanese authors are listening, um, or just anyone in general, um, here's a good tip to write in your story. If you come to the point where one of your characters says, I don't want to have sex with you, please let go, <laughs> then it gets a bit uncomfortable when the other person goes, no, you can't escape me now. <laughs> or something to, that's not the exact words of this show, but it was very much the uh, the, you know, how it came across, and it's it's very you know, that's how it was. Because especially because this guy's young, um, the younger dude, he's physically taller, he's a lot wider and bulkier than the other dude. So like when it's drawn, the, this guy's like the the older actor is normally in ninety percent of the show 
he was like this strong, like say, cunning kind of guy. He's always self-assured. But with this guy, he wilts and he's like very vulnerable, which makes it worse. Like, oh, it was it was weird. It's not romantic, I guess. I mean, suppose if some girls are flicking the bean over it, whatever. But I don't know. I wouldn't look at it and just go, oh, that's a nice romance. That's a nice yaoi, uh, you know, <laughs> romance there. It's like Yuri on Ice would have been a different story if Victor had just fucking, you know, bent over Yuri on the first episode and done him up the shitter. It wouldn't have been, uh, you know, wouldn't have been great, would it? Well, I mean, that's maybe not the best way to describe homosexual romance, but um, that's, no, I'm going to say probably not. Ready. But um, yeah, the it was weird. It was uncomfortable, and yeah, it's consent's not kind of important, even in even in anime shows. You know, Maybe it is not make it so rapey. It's not playful. I know, I know, we have it in rom coms and stuff where the guy's a creepy stalker, and in real life, you go, he's a bit of a creepy stalker, but it's okay. But, mm. but the problem is. With rom-coms, like, let's take any famous rom-com, Failure to Launch, let's say. If you stand out and look at it a day after you've seen it in the theaters, it's objectively horrifying, but it tricks you when you're watching it. Mm Mm-hmm. This doesn't, it sounds like. No. If you're questioning how terrible it is when you're watching it, it's not doing a good job. Yeah, it was terrible, and there was no real plot to it aside from that going oh these are actors it's not even because that could have been an interesting subplot is they need to cling to their fame this guy does whatever he can to maybe sabotage other rivals or something i don't know but none of that didn't show it it very vaguely alluded to oh he'll he says he'll do whatever it takes to keep his top spot um and his only objection as well because as far as I'm aware, he was looking at women and everything. Like, you know, so it seemed that he was straight, but his only objective yeah. to when the boy was there, he's like, huh, two male s- movie stars together. That's like catnip for the media. Like, so he just was bothered about, you know, not, oh, I've never realized I was gay up until this point or bisexual or whatever. It's just, oh, what will the media say? So that does sound bisexual, I should say. If that's his objection. Maybe is, I'm looking what will into the media it too much. Say? I don't know. Maybe he was always gay. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. You can just oh have always. I don't know. I I don't know enough about it. But it doesn't I, say in that. It never specifies it in the show. It shows him sort of you know looking and around women. So I would assume that was the point, and they were trying to get across of oh he never knew he had these feelings to guy. But whatever. We spent too much time talking about the shit show. I'm never going to watch it. Probably again. about five minutes ago. You guys shouldn't watch Tyra. Not what going to. You? Cleanse a palate, Corin. What, you, what did you watch next? Um, I watched the first episode of Duggle, Double Decker, Doug and Kirill. Kirill? Kirill. He's the only oh. one with a stupid name, I swear to God. But uh, Double Decker, is, as we previously established, is the spinoff series of Tiger and Bunny, in which mm-hmm. we concentrate on uh, not superheroes, but cops. I mean, they're more like detectives who are like there's I don't want to say like the in Tiger and Bunny there's like this drug that like basically like gives you like weird superpowers sometimes yeah it like roids you out and it can like mutate you if you use it too much and these are the like the special task force that take care of those people like once the regular like beat cops can't deal with it then it's them, and then they're like the next step up would supposedly be the super actual superheroes. Mm-hmm. But they're like just normal people with like guns and shit. And it was fucking hilarious. I forgot how funny that show could be. Like, it fall like the main character, I guess, is Kirill, and he is like this. He's just a beat cop, right? And he's not a very good one. And then one day he's like he. Fa- through a series of um, comedic errors, finds himself um, in a warehouse, and there is, like, a bad dude with the drugs in his system having a shootout with cops. The bad dude doesn't know he's also in the warehouse. And, like, one of the fellow, his fellow cops is, like, in there too, and he's been shot or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the other main character, Doug, like, 
and he just shows up. He's like stuck in a pipe. He was trying to like sneak in, but he's stuck. So he's like, dude, I need you to help me. And their, and their plan to save the cop who's been shot and distract the bad dude so Doug can like sneak back out through the pipe and get a drop on him is for Kirill to like throw a smoke bomb and then just like crouch and then stand up and turn at the bad dude completely naked and say, I'm a time traveler. <laughs> that's the okay, that's pretty plan. good. It's hilarious. So uh it's really good. I'm just if you liked Tiger and Bunny, this is a good show for you to watch. I will definitely look into it. Yeah. We'll see how it develops. I mean, if Tiger and Bunny had a really good like plot that developed over time while still being a lot of like monster of the week kind of stuff. So I'm expecting a very, very similar like thing on this. Yeah, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But it's everyone has like very nice and like emotive expressions, and everyone's even though it's been a very short like intro, everyone seems we've actually like seen has a pretty like decent personality. Like they feel like people. So that's awesome. Good promising signs from that. That's definitely something now. Also, instead of picking up next week, I have to say this: there was a scene where Kirill was reading like a comic book or a magazine or something in his like bedroom. And, like, it was just a half a second flash. But I swear to God that the cover of this book, he, this magazine he was reading, was just, like, one of the posters for X-Men Evolutions, the animated one that was on, like, Fox TV. What was that one? Where they were all teenagers. X, X-Men Evolution, yes, it was exactly that one. I swear to God. They just, like, copy-pasted it. That's the oddest property. I don't know. Maybe they thought no one would notice. I don't know if it was Evolution. Maybe it was. Fuck, it's been too long. But yeah, definitely that. So, real good. Fair enough. Um, Yeah, third one I watched then um, is Gaikotsu Shotenin Honda-san. It's the skeleton man in the bookstore. I really... I meant to watch this one. I completely missed it on the list, though. It's short form. <clears throat> um, it's exactly what you expect, where it's sort of like, not stop motion, but it's very, like, limited frames, if you know what I mean. Like, kind of yes. action going on. No, exactly. What you mean. It was alright. It was weird. Like, really weird, as you can imagine. Um... What's I, maybe it was just the first episode, but what really stood out to me was the amount of like. So the first, there's there's two jokes in it. There's two gags. There's like two mini episodes. It's only eleven minutes long. Sure. Um, first one is a handsome foreign old man comes to them like a Hollywood actor, and he's got this voice where he's like, "Hello there, I am looking for this book for my daughter." Speaking in English. Um, like, it's a guy speaking in English to him, and he's like, oh, shit, I can kind of speak English, but not. Then the guy just switches to perfect Japanese um, and starts telling him, and it's a yaoi doujin for his daughter that he wants. So the guy is like, shit, how do I tell him that his daughter wants, like, a, a hentai porn mag um, and that we don't sell it here? So he just, t- he just shouts out something like, that is uh, super... Yowie level or something. I don't know. He shouts something like that. Um, in, in like does. bad English? In bad English. Okay. But this is what makes it hilarious because he shouts that and then the guy just goes, Jesus Christ! <laughs> but then he asks what Yowie is. So in the framework of the joke, that doesn't make sense because he's not shocked that it's Yowie. He just, he shouted but, super Yowie something. He went, Jesus Christ! And then goes, watch Yowie. I mean, that's the joke, though. And that's also a, it it's was, an established joke where someone says, it's that, and the character's like, oh, my God, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it, was, it was just the randomest soundbite because also the, um, the actual uh, – because he's off screen at the time when he says it. So it just he says this, and then there's just a soundbite of, Jesus Christ, over the top. And then he just like go, cuts to him, and he asks what yo he is. Really weird that was. Then I mean, he had that, a bunch that of... That just reminds me of Joseph Joestar going is his old man voice. Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit. 
I need to start getting these together and put them on a soundboard for this show. But um, I like that one. And then there was just one about how Yaoi and Boy's Love translates to fans around the world. So there's a Swedish Fujoshi who comes in and introduces herself as a Swedish Fujoshi. There's a really overweight, short-haired, blonde girl who's maybe American or English. I don't know. She's supposed to be one of those who's really happy she's found this this forbidden love thing. And then there's like all these different ethnicities that come in and just ask about other books and stuff that they Is want. Is this secretly about Manimal's office? Or not office? Workplace? His pawn shop. His pawn shop <laughs> where he seems to get every single nationality in the world. Maybe it's next door to it somehow. Because <laughs> so, it's like he gets all sorts in. They're just like, I want this. And he's like... You want muscle and muscle. <laughs> and they're talking about a girl's like, can I read this one because I want to see who's the top and who's the bottom. And it's the weirdest thing. I'm just like, why is there such an emphasis on like foreign people, like from, you know, Western people? I don't know. It's, I think it's kind of funnier that way. If you just have like an, an, random. an improbable, like, uh, what's the word? The people who go... To a place. Patrons. Improbable patrons. Yeah. I hope it continues that way, because um, I wasn't really expecting too much from it. I was like, it's a bookstore. How interesting can it be? But it was funny enough to hold my attention for ten minutes, so I will check out the next episode next week and see if it carries on. Because it could just be that <clears throat> random little weird one that you have slotted in there all the time. Yep, it does. The, I want to pick that one up. I just missed it on the list because there were so many other things going on. Yeah, there's fuck tons. I need to get organized. But um, yeah, you can binge it. You can binge two episodes and it'll be same as one full one. Yep. And I will say there is the next thing is the one that was I ended up watching, but I do not believe was on my list and forgot it was coming. SSS Gridman, which stands for Samurai Superhero... Su- Super Samurai Super Squad, Great Man, which is supers. it's Trigger new show. It is, I mean, Tr- Great Man is a pre-existing property, but Triggers is dealing it, and uh, it's really good. Like it's it had, had kind of some scenes had like that thing you're talking about, like low number of frames kind of style of animation mostly done for, like, comedic effect. And, like, the first time it happens, you're, like, worried that Crunchyroll's freaking out. But <laughs> then you remember, oh, it's a trigger show. But, like, the fights were really good because, like, he there's a giant robot named Gridman and he fights giant monsters. And, like, the dude wakes up and he, like, doesn't have any memories. And then there's, he's, like, a, he's in, like, a junk shop run by some girl and her mother who's in his class. And then, like, he meets his friend, and he's like, I don't fucking remember who you are or who I am. And it doesn't really, I guess, matter, because, like, they have that follow that kind of line of logic that some trigger shows do sometimes, where it's just like, this is happening now, and it's fine. Just go with it. Yeah. And you don't cool, question but... it because it's amazing. But, like, he gets sucked into the computer like poltergeist style and suddenly he is the robot as well and then there he's like fighting the kaiju and shit and people are blowing up and all sorts of explosions happening and like he rips off the kaiju's head and the kaiju is also like made of wires and shit and it, it lands on their school and the whole school burns down but like the next day that it's back and everyone's just like whatever even though it's still in the news that the city burnt down last night things are just kind of fine broadcast from the news station let's see it's it's very i don't know what's going on but i like it a lot also i'm the girl who's like one of the main girls doesn't look like she's wearing any pants and it worries me like she's objectively like wearing a mini skirt under it but she has like like this long like this school doesn't have like a uniform from what i can tell everyone's wearing something fucking different but, like, you know how, like, they have those long, like, jackets kind of cardigan almost looking? Yeah. It's one of those, and it just, like, goes down to, like, right below her waist, and it, that looks like it's all there is. And it's very uncomfortable. These schools need to implement, you know, 
certain lengths of skirt. Yeah, there there is no skirt length requirement in this school as far as I can tell. Over the knee. I think oh, under the knee. Or to the knee. Yeah, not over the knee. Over the knee's too long. To the knee. At least. But yeah, it looks cool. The robots are cool. I like the characters. And one of his friends has glasses, and I really respect the anim- trigger on this, is that they didn't do the stupid thing where the glasses have to disappear to show the eyeballs. Oh, good. He, he has full-on glasses. Granted, the sides are like, Semi clear, so you can see his eyes from the side, but that's fine. That's just stylistic glasses. Yeah, that's a pet peeve of mine when you know, or when you can see an eye through hair. Yeah, I mean, okay, eyes through hair is one thing, I guess, because you can see there's eyes. Ways through hair, to do it, yeah, but there's like ways to do it. I'm I'm looking at uh, Haruhi Suzumiya where they just draw the eye over it and don't color it, like they just color it hair color, and it, I'm like, hmm. No, not a fan of that. But um, yeah, yeah Gridman's real good. That... Oh, and it's like a Rita Repulsa thing kind of going on, right? Because like you know, in Power Rangers, she makes the monsters out of clay. Yeah, that seems to be what's going on. There's another dude because like Gridman like shows up. His face is on a, this like really old janky computer, and then only the main character can like see the image. I think except the other two kind of start seeing it at the end. But there's another dude with, like, another robot dude on his computer, and he, like, makes, like, little monster molds and, like, like clay figures. And then the dude, the, his oh. robot dude brings them light, and those are the kaijus. Huh. So it's really cool. I'm really excited for this show. Do you think they're making up for Darling in the Franks and their participation in that? Uh, I feel like, I mean, and this was already in development. This has been in development for a long time. Right. Yeah, maybe, what maybe was Trigger's all last good animators? Act, <laughs> I think so. Because Trigger's last actual project was what? The one where Kiz Niver. Yeah, Kiz Niver. And like, honestly, there was like no Trigger talent going into Darling the Bronx after the first couple of episodes, really. No, probably not. So yeah, this is where they've been putting their money. Like their robot and Kaiju are like CG, but they're like really well done CG. So I can let that down because God knows that would have been expensive, even for Trigger. Because <laughs> like it's a really like detailed Trigger show, right? Like you can tell their Trigger designs, the characters there are, but they have a lot of detail going on. This is not the usual sketchy Trigger animation. Okay, just like Netflix in the UK, stepping up the game. Definitely. So they've put some time and money into this for sure. That's cool. I mean, it's again one that I'll haven't checked out yet, but I will certainly give that a go. Is that tickling your pickle, manimal? I say the girl is his type, so, but I don't think he's going to watch it. Sadly, he's going to bite for it. Unfortunately, he's got a mouthful of peanut butter waffle. Um. Yeah, last thing on my list that I watched then is the time I got reincarnated as a slime. How was the time you got reincarnated as a slime? (laughs) It was a fun little episode. Um, Starts off the typical way, you know, we see his demise and being transported to this new world and he's a slime. So he just gets stabbed in the street. He's a 37-year-old successful middle management guy. He's happy with his life, however he is, 37 and a virgin, and he makes reference there a couple times for no real reason. He just sort of says it. He's like, oh, I don't think I'd die a virgin. I can't believe that I'm, by the age of 30, I'm a great wizard. I'm almost 40, so I'd be a sage, because I'm a virgin. Don't, I don't know, maybe that's more of a joke that translates over in Japan a bit better. I did like, because his colleague, his work colleague was there, and like his dying words to him were just, he was like, um, Sitaro or whatever. Please, Go to my home and take my hard drive, throw it in the bath, <laughs> destroy it. <laughs> I mean, it was like Gandalf. <laughs> for the record, that is my dying wish to all of you. I want you to come to my home, break in before the cops get here, and burn anything that has a computer like link to it. I don't want anyone knowing. No one can know um, my dark secrets. I did just love that. It was just like his dying word. Just 
Make sure you destroy my hard drive. Thank you. And then he worries about it in the afterlife. And it, is that, that the last scene? That locked drawer in my apartment that I told you never to open. Continue doing that. <laughs> he's like, I hope I didn't. I hope he did it. I hope he didn't check. And he's just there crying in his apartment while he's dumping his, his <laughs> desktop all into the back. <laughs> now you can rest easy, Sensei. I did like that. Um, it was, like I say, a fun little show. Um, it was kind of cool because he, uh, he's been transporting this as well and he was in this cave and he's just a little slime. He can't see, but he has loads of special abilities um, so he can ingest things and realizes he has fuck all else to do, so he just decides to ingest stuff. Um, so he decides to do that and then finds his way accidentally in front of a dragon and he has a conversation with this little dragon who's like a Sundera dragon. He's a scary dragon who decides to give him the power of vision. Well, he has magic sense, but basically you can see. This is what he does for him. And then um, he can't talk because he's a little slime, but he can hear his thoughts because he's one of the four true dragons, but he's been sealed away by uh, another human in this land because humans can be summoned, apparently, as as summons, like summoned creatures. Uh, <clears throat> and they're powerful things. So he has a little conversation with the dragon. It was it was fun stuff. So it doesn't really give you a, a hint at where it's going to go next. Like I'm assuming he's going to get out the cave and try and find these other these people from other worlds or people from his world. Oh sure, um, I should think. Yeah, he's, yeah. There's, I mean, just look in the poster and the PV and that. There was all a whole cast of characters. Um, but yeah, I it's quite funny. Just being a little slime. Um, I like the interactions between those two characters. You know, even just the the dragon being a little Sundera because he's a he's royalty. He's a dragon. He's a noble creature, but also he's been locked away for three hundred years and he's dead bored. So he does desperately want a friend, even if it is just a slime. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so it's it's fun. One I'll definitely continue to keep watching because um, I, I think it's quite a little creative concept and a little creative spin on the lost in another world um, genre. The, what is it called? Ikas, I, Isake? Isake? Is, One of them? I don't know. I don't know. It's Isakoi? got a term, but, No, that's something else. Uh, it's either... I don't know. Answers on a postcard. But yeah, that's the four that I have checked out so far. There okay. is a lot more that I want to get to next week. There is one more thing I watched on Netflix, which was the first episode of The Last Hope or The Lost Hope. Can you hold that thought for 30 seconds? I can indeed. Thank you. I remember when I watched shows. Why? Why don't you pick one? I'm not pick going one. to. <sighs> but why? It's it, over. It's over. No, no, it's not. Yeah, the it worst is. Case, it isn't because I got like that in 2016. I couldn't I even got... watch the fourth season of my second favorite series. <laughs> yeah, I got again. I got. I got like that at the end of 2016, where I was just so out of not watching, so out of watching things. I watched about ten things that beginning of the year and that's it the last yeah. half of the year i was watching nothing um and then i one day i just sat myself down and said just watch one episode of whatever oh, like you know yeah. anything that vaguely interested me and the worst um, that could happen is i've wasted 20 minutes but in all honesty i probably would have wasted them some other way oh uh, well, a few know. games of Fortnite or whatever it's, it's over a, a place further than the universe the was point. a good conclusion that's, that's the key point you don't want to. It's so there's no point complaining about not watching stuff because you don't want to. Yeah, but I do want to. You just said you, you don't want to. You absolutely I know. don't want to. Yeah, but I do. So do it then. That's no, the point. Yeah, but I'm not going to. Oh, good lord. <laughs> I'm getting. Oh, I don't want to do this, <laughs> but I do. Right. Here's the thing: you either got to put up a shut up. That's the extent of of how things go. What's All happening? Right. What did I miss? Manimal wants to watch stuff, but he won't because he doesn't want to. That's not sense. That's not doesn't make sense, but I don't know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just the the only other thing, <clears throat> quickly to mention, I won't continue watching it because, whew, um, it was the Lost Hope or Last Hope. It was called. It was on Netflix. New one, new anime series on there. It's a post-apocalyptic world, I think. They're based in China. A lot of the names were Chinese sounding, um, like the place names and the the people. So, post-apocalyptic world. Essentially, there was a 
power source, an energy source. I think it's called like the quantum drive or something that exploded. And it sent shockwaves all around the world. And it ended up fusing uh, organic and bionic material, mechanical material together, which forces all the animals um, and all plant life and stuff to be a hybrid of mechanical stuff and biological stuff and organisms, which means it... Ra- um, rapidly increases the rate of evolution. So now most creatures are like massive, gargantuan beasts that are super intelligent and have driven humans to the brink of extinction. Um, so they fight them off with mechs and stuff. And then the main character is a dude who's an exiled scientist who's working to perfect his drive thing so he can fight back against these monsters. Um, not a bad premise. I just wasn't much for the animation at all. It was very CG, and that's not the bad thing. It was just the it looked bad in in uh, in motion. Um, there was one scene where they were cutting from the CG mechs to a girl, and then she's more traditionally animated, whereas like the C- obviously the mechs are very cheapy CG looking, and it was doing this hard cut, hard cut, hard cut, hard cut for dramatic effect. And I almost had to turn it off. I couldn't stand it. I was like, this looks so terrible, just flashing back and forth. Um, Not many of the characters had much weight to them. Shock horror at the end of episode one, it revealed that the exiled scientist is the one who who made this quantum drive thing that blew up and, and caused the world to be the way it is anyway, which was immediately apparent. So, yeah, I won't watch that again. I won't bother following up on that one. But that is all from me this week. I'm planning to check out a lot more next week. I'll say, uh, just a few things for me. I was going to watch Ulysses, Jahan, Dark, To, Red, and Ken, no, Kishi, but I just, I just don't have it in my heart to watch another Harlem show. I just can't <laughs> do it. got enough room in your heart for one Harlem show. I don't have any, not for any more. I just can't. Man, it's just, no more. You're not doing it to yourself. I, I've been there before. I just can't. I can't do it anymore. It just looks so dumb and stupid. And I, nope. <laughs> and the other thing was uh, we were asked to watch some uh, Hino Maru Zumo, which I have not gotten around to yet, but I plan to coming up. Ah, yes, the Zumo one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, do... the Zumo one, yes. So it one. looks like it could be fun. I'm definitely interested in it. Just haven't gone around to it. We will do that. We'll make an effort to do that this weekend, though, because I know it's on Crunchyroll. I saw it up there, but I already had plenty of other shows to try and watch. But at least I know where yeah, I'm standing now. So, at least another five shows um, by the end of next week. So you know, just cast that net out wider. See if I can pull any any sleeper hits. And obviously, Golden Cam Week season two started, so. Wanna yeah, God, to that that came There's out. So many shows. This is why Did I'm. Did that come out today or yesterday? I don't know. This is one of the reasons why, despite liking Radiant so far, I might just not keep up with it because there's so many other shows. It's understandable. There is a lot of shit to get through. Um, that's. I'm hoping I'll probably a lot of these will be one hit wonders. I mean, to be honest, I know at least two of them that I watched. Um, you know, in terms of the Last Hope and that guy, whatever the fuck. It's going to be bad. I all, I kind of started watching that maid one. Do you know the maid who's the lowly con? Uh, um, yeah, I, thought, I don't think you need to keep watching any of that. Yeah, I was like, I turned it off after a few minutes because I was just like, I'm watching this. I know it's going to be bad. I know I'm not going to like it. And all I'm going to come on the show is say, it's bad. I really didn't like it. And I just haven't got the energy because... If it can make it funny, if there's some things it can pull apart, but I just at the moment I'm just like, it's shit. I don't know who makes it. I don't know who it's made for. Um, yeah. So what's the point? Why waste energy on that? Yeah. It just. I don't know. There's not enough room in my heart for lowly con maids. And on that bombshell, I think it's time to end the episode because that's all for me. Uh, I'm done. I'm ready for. To hit the hay. Definitely, uh, it's been a it's been a week. A lot of anime watched. Hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, we'll find ourselves in a nice rhythm. But it looks like it's going to be a busy season. Yeah, which is good. Which is good. We've it's got good. plenty to talk about and cover. So that's what I like. Um, I'm re-energized and refueled because I fell off the wagon 
on the summer season, but I'm back in it on fall. Um, and we've got a lot of shit to do, so it's all gravy. But just before we go, is there any parting words from you guys to round out episode 153? Uh, you know, I thought I had something, but I just, I just don't. Oh, never mind. Oh, I will say, I finally finished, um, March of the 10,000, uh, the book by the ancient Greek dude named Xenophon. Uh, definitely, I feel like a bit biased towards Xenophon, since it was him writing about himself and about how great he was, and, like, no one backs him up on that. But also, like, um... It would make a great fucking movie if you cut out, like, a bunch of the non-happening bits and gave it, like, a decent ending. Like, it just kind of peters out at the end. Like, they get back to, like, mainland mainland Greece and just cut it there. But, like, there's some good shit in there if you wanted to make, like, a movie. Cast, maybe. I don't know. Who'd be a good Xenophon? Who's a good, like, mid-20s actor these days? Buff. Uh, a buff mid twenties actor. Casper in ancient Greek. Zac Efron. No. Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler's too old, man. I don't know any young actors. This is getting quite bad. I do. I can't think of anyone. I mean, granted, Zac Paul Efron. Culkin. <laughs> Not probably the right. Uh. Because I feel like if you could roll back, like, Brad Pitt a few years, be he'd perfect. be good. He'd be perfect, but, like, not anymore. To, he, he's gone need... past there, like, he's gone past that point. We need Fight Club Brad Pitt. We do a Fight Club Brad Pitt. We good. I'm just trying to think of who have I seen. What are... I don't know. There's so many, uh, what's the one family? There's so many of them. Kardashians? Not the Kardashians. The male actors. There's a bunch of them. Uh, Thor. Thor. Oh, the Hemsworth. The Hemsworth. There's gotta be a Hemsworth who would be good. Yeah? No, that's true. One of the Hemsworth would probably be great. Is, uh, is... They're already all bulky. Is actor old enough? Uh, he's old enough, but he's so young looking. Needs to look a bit more grizzled. Okay. Um, Xenophon is a general, but he's also in his yeah. like mid twenties because that's how you do. I don't know. Let's say one of the Hemsworths, one of the lesser Hemsworths. The lesser Hemsworths. The lesser half of the Hemsworths can be in this cast. That's cool. We'll have them in there, and there'll be some great Greek heroes. Liam, uh, what's Liam up to? Probably nothing. Nout. Absolutely nout. But have you got anything to say to us, Manimal, before we go? Have you got anything you want to tell the listeners at home? Yeah, at the end of this episode, we'll put the song The Love Agent, which was written by Lego, and he sings most of the song. Uh, the Love Agent. It's off. I'm not going to promote the new album because it's not good, but I'll promote this song because it's good. Good, good, good. Uh, well, yeah, we'll be serenading out with the love agent um i want to send some love um to all of you via my agent so there you go um that'll get with you in three to five days um yeah that's it for me thanks for listening everybody it's gonna be something else to serenade you as well but i'll leave that in animals capable hands but yeah i'm going bye 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 the chuni chronicles continues Chinese noodles and finicky foodles. The day passes like all days and continues locked in the cycle of never ending dull gray days. The chuni is back and wonders why, why life must be this way. She ponders looking outside at buildings and birds that tower and fly to nothing, birds who soar for no meaning other than survival. To the next day, they eat, they kill, they do whatever, whatever it takes to see another day. The Chuni 
sits now back in life. The forest day is far beyond. The forest day is a mere memory untainted by the sands of time, painted only by rosy, nostalgic vision. The Chuni ponders the forest and thinks only of the forest. As time passes and she thinks, what more is this? Am I on the brink of something greater? Or am I in the greater? The Chuni knows this. Detective of love Brings death with a gun Detecting your indecision Detecting your trouble Get the girl before it's late A little stock in doing great Keep it ain't got nothing on him Mango P.I.'s on the case Oh, love's a melody Warren singing a melody You gotta get the girl, don't be a minstrel Don't only look and sit and stare If you need a bud, I'm there I'm the devil in the dare Keep on running, you're winning this race Some love is a shun. He's a man on a mission. Talking about himself in third person. Singing songs for himself. Asian Orange, you're totally lame. Mango P.I.'s gonna win this game. Jiu-Jitsu in the arts of all brothers. 